Hi everyone, it's Karen here for Artist Live with a new uh, art journal tutorial. I'm going to be creating this art journal today using a lot of different products from different uh, manufacturers. The stencil is Donna Downey's. These are the anemones. And um, actually, I'm not say, sure I'm saying that correct, correct, that flower. I actually thought they were poppies, but when I went to look up the product name, they were actually anemones. But I thought anemones were actually the ones from the ocean, so that's why I got confused about the names. Maybe they share the same name. Somebody could correct me. Um, so Rika is going to be moderating for me today and putting the links. For those of you who are watching this after, the links are all below in the description area of the, my YouTube channel and on the Artist Life YouTube channel. So I'm just going to um, go through something before I start working on this i want to show you something that i did um this is my dilutions journal this is uh the oh god uh, diane ravely's dilutions journal and i've had a lot of i have a lot of things in it but what happened is that this this whole thing this big thing was actually inside this okay so this was part of my dilutions version journal like this but it was getting so, so, so thick that I could not, like, you know, I basically used these pages and then I had all these extra pages and I didn't know what to do with them. So I actually took it apart. I actually took part of it apart. And then I have all, see, this is all my journal pages from like different live shows or from different tutorials. So I have doubles of everything. So going back to this one. So I do have, like, for example, if you remember when I made this one like last time then uh, or this one then i have doubles of things right so they were like basically almost back to back double of the same type of journaling page so now that i have two journals i can actually go back and forth so um and i will once i'm finished this journal when this is like uh, almost only a few pages left i'm actually going to create a uh, tutorial with my own to make my own cover hard cover on it so then i have uh, and you see how it opens perfectly which is really nice that's why i'm really excited to do this uh because otherwise i would have wasted a whole journal for nothing so now we're going to get on to um the actual a journaling page and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my the second half of this journal which is this one it does have a little bit of a gap here but that's okay I don't really mind it this is just for fun to play with so it doesn't really matter if it has a gap or doesn't have a gap because you can just work with it either way and add all your texture on so uh, I'm going to work with this and I just want to tell you that I actually already primed this I primed this with white gesso I just gave it a light coat of just uh of this uh heavy white gesso from prima i just did it at uh, one coat i think it was maybe two i don't remember i just gave it a coat just so i wouldn't have to wait to, for it to dry this is just you know just with a brush i just did it all on top so that's the only thing that i did that i pre-did everything else i'm going to be doing on the show so um to create a little bit of texture not texture more like interest in the background i used uh this this is the Tim Holtz uh, tissue paper. This is the called, uh, uh, I want to say like postcards or something like that. Oh, I can't remember it, but Rika will put in the name on that. And, um, and I have this lovely thing. And funny enough, I just, um, now that I'm looking at it, I actually saved it because the numbers were right here, but I guess I covered them up. So it didn't, it was a bit pointless to put those numbers there, but I will just, put them maybe a bit more in so then maybe they will show better and then I'll rip a couple more pieces from this to for my background so the nice thing about this is that you can use it you can use it basically anywhere on your page it's a very thin tissue paper but has really nice um, um, how do you call it designs so it's really nice to use on your work and what I'm going to do to glue them so I usually used to oh and i don't know if you heard that boom that there's thunder outside so let's hope everything goes well and the thunder doesn't like suddenly makes a shortcut in my computer but i'm not going to put those words out there that that is true anyway so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this matte medium this is a fluid medium and I actually learned this trick from dd katrin who has done a couple of um 
uh, guest spots for me here for us here at artist life and i uh, usually i would use like the soft matte gel medium which you could for of course you can use and i'll show this is what i mean and i will use it later on for something else but for this one what i like about this is that it's really fluid so it's really nice and easy to use i'm gonna get a paintbrush let me get a soft paintbrush um not of my none of my paint brushes are soft because i've been not taking care of them as much as i should now i'm going to go directly in here just because um i don't want to pour it into anywhere so i'm just going to add some of the actual um liquid fluid matte medium underneath and then of course seal it on top and i see my paintbrush is dirty but oh well we go with the flow i have to wash this don't know why it's dirty but that's okay you just get a little bit of a little bit of um of an orange tinge that will be covered anyway so it's not a problem okay let me go back and now it's okay so what i like about do, using this for tissue paper it's harder to use with it when the paper is thicker but if it's just tissue paper it's actually quite easy to use i'm just going to remove some of that color that went on that i didn't want that was not part of the plan but you know this is what i always say some things don't are not part of the plan but you just go with the flow and you continue on uh maybe i should change paint brushes because it's just not a good idea okay let's see all right next paintbrush let's hope this one doesn't have no this one is okay so i'm just adding pieces of of this tissue paper it doesn't really matter where you add them because you i don't want the full image to be on the background i just want parts of it to stick through but you don't know which parts are going to be so you are using the full like a, a big image but in reality only part of it is going to show and that's okay and that's what that's the look that i want so there we go Hi, Terry. Terry? Terry from Spain. Hola. Como estas? What's your name? She says she's from Spain. Somebody's from Spain. That's very cool. I was just recently there in the in the in September. Okay. Just going to put some more. And some over here. So I'm just adding it in different areas. And the last one I'm going to put over here. Okay, so that's basically my really quick background. And I'm going to dry it up. So there we go. So I'm going to dry this up. So I don't want to cover everything because it's not necessary. The whole point of a mixed media page is that it covers some of the areas. Um, you want to add texture in, in images in some areas and not in others. So that's a good way of um, doing this. The tissue paper is awesome. And the one thing I like about this, um, this matte, fluid matte medium is that because it's so liquidy, it dries really quickly, which is really nice. So, while well, other ones will take longer, my patience, uh, this was really good for my patience. That's what I mean to say. So, there we go. So, I added it. Now, what I want to do is, like, this is a too prominent. You can see this really, really well. Um, so, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of white gesso on top. And the reason why I'm doing this, I want to kind of blend in the background with the edges so that helps that helps when you're using the gesso so it's a good way of kind of kind of giving it an extra coat you're also kind of whitewashing a little bit the background so it covers it a little bit and you don't get that really strong image but it also helps you blending those edges so you don't really want to see well, you can, but you, I, don't, I don't really like seeing the, the harsh edges on the project. It does give it texture, 
but I prefer if they kind of blend in with the background. So if they're a little bit, if there's a little bit of a of an edge, that's okay. I just don't want to see it like so prominent that um, that you will like all you see is that edge and your eye kind of draws into that into that. So this is why. Oops, have some remnants from something else. So this is why I do this. And also because I want to kind of wash down uh, the the harsh images, like the strong images, especially when they're too black. So that's a good way of doing it. Okay. So another way of going, getting a whitewash on your projects is that you can use uh, a spray bottle. Here it is. And you could like... Kind of add a little bit of water and then you know kind of wipe it off so you don't get a very white area but i do like it like this that it's kind of hiding a lot of my design and just leave leaves it as if it's just um an old written text from a long time ago underneath okay so you, once I give this a really nice white wash, I'm going to again dry it up because what I want to do is I want to add some more nice interest in the background. So let me close this while I dry. And the nice thing, because I put such a small, like thin amount of gesso, it will dry up really quickly. Yeah, so this technique, you're right, Rika, this technique is really good because um, it's just so simple to do and just really easy and it creates really cool effects. I think I put a lot of, of it here and you see this is what happens when you don't have patience and you just mess around with it. It kind of becomes, you can't see it in the light, but it actually creates this really nice bumpy texture. Okay, so now that I'm dry, I am going to take out uh, this, new, I love this stamp set. This is a Tim Holtz stamp set. This is a brand new one, well, a brand new one from the Sierra. It's a call, it's a Stampers Anonymous. Um, it's called Etc. And it has all these images of like... Um, it's actually very similar to the actual um, tissue paper. It has like a ledger. It has different stamp images and things like that. So it's really cool. And I used a few of these images. Hold on. Let me take these out. And just to add a little bit more interest. Now you could use one or the other. You could not use the stamp. But I just wanted to show you that there's two ways of doing this. You could use the stamp to create the same type of images. And then you could do a whitewash on top. I'm not going to do a whitewash on top of my stamps, but you can. And then you can get the same effect as this. Um, I'm going to uh, use some archival ink. You can see how well it's used. I've used this one, how well used it is. And basically, the way I like, as I always say, I mean, the nice thing about the Tim Holtz stamps is that they have irregular uh, uh, shaped uh, edges. So you don't get that exact effect, um, exact stamp. You actually get a distressed stamp look, but I still, to even get it I even more distressed, I always hold my stamps this way, which I think I've said this before. And when I stamp, I don't let the edges kind of touch as much. That helps with uh, creating these really nice um, effects, the distress effects in the background without having to uh, to feel that you have like a square. So you see, you kind of create that that effect without having to have a square around it. Um, I took this number as well. This was just fun to just put a couple of numbers. I think I went back after and uh, and added some more images once I had done the poppies. But right now I'm just going to do it first. And then you can kind of, when you're done your project, you can kind of see where things are needed and where things are missing and you can go ahead and add them over there. So you can overlap these images so it looks like it's a really old paper and that's what i like about this 
um, I think I'm putting them upside down actually and I'm not even noticing and it doesn't really matter right so you can just basically mix and this this all comes together as one really nice distress page and the nice thing why I covered everything because I don't really know where things are gonna land and I want to make sure that there is a kind of an image everywhere so when I actually like this like distress things and put things on top you know so you see what i mean like sometimes it shows and sometimes it doesn't so i want to make sure sometimes it goes in between the flower i don't know exactly where it's going to land i don't plan this so i just make sure that i covered everything so that's what i mean by that so you see how like sometimes that you have things inside the flowers and so forth so this is uh what i mean by that and here is um here is what i'm gonna hold on one second okay so i'm just going to clean my stamps a little bit and then we're going to go to the next and i'm not going to put the circle one yet i do have this circle one but i am going to put it after and i'm going to keep it here on the side just so i can refer to it later on okay so now i'm going to apply the the actual like anemone flower and i'm going to use um this graphite texture paste from prima this is one of my uh Favorite texture paste, I actually like used to use this a lot and I kind of stopped. I don't know why. I haven't used it in a long time and I was so excited to actually get back to it. It really gives a really, really nice textured effect and I really like it. And although it looks um, gray when you apply it, it actually dries like a char like a really nice charcoal gray. Uh, the black, I meant to say. Charcoal black. So here is the stencil. This is the stencil that I use. And actually, funny thing is that when I was looking for the stencil, um, you, I, there was one that came just with one or the other, and there's one with both. So I kind of linked all of them up, like uh, uh, Rika will link this as well. Oh, hi, Patricia. And so, so I'm just going to put this. And what I did is I created like one, basically one flower here, and then another one on this side. And what's good about that is that in that sense, you can... Um, you can like you know split them up especially if you have a bumpy surface area like mine i'm almost trying to think whether or not i should go now with the taller one here and then the shorter one on this side and do it backwards no i think i'll stick to what i did before uh let's see no maybe not actually no maybe i will go backwards this time just because it's easier for me to create uh so it's the same technique it's just going so i'm going to use my silicone brush which is really easy to use for this kind of gridded texture on stencils sorry i'm tongue tongue tied today i don't know why um so i'm going to just use it and the, what you want to do is that when you're applying such a texturized paste you want to make sure that you're actually uh, applying enough that it will cover the area well you don't want to be able to get you don't want the paste to kind of or the or the tool that you're using to get stuck in between the stencil so it's best to have more on the page because this is a really thick um th really thick paste it's best to have more on your palette than less and then you can scrape it off after out of the stencil so usually i usually when i say it to use paste i usually say take a little bit and use only a little bit at a time you can always add more but for this specific paste i recommend you using more on the on the palette or on the silicone brush and just make sure that it does so it so it doesn't get stuck inside in between the stencil if that makes sense at all um so i'm going to just do the stem so in this case yeah you waste a lot of of the paste when you put it on and you'll see a lot of it is still on but you do get that perfect image because of it so later on i can i'm gonna go and i'm gonna scrape it all off so that's not to worry about that and i'm going to make now this one go the other direction i'm trying to think lower or higher i think this one is gonna go maybe i'll do this one much higher It'll be a little bit of a different design. This is why I like about things that you can design them a different way and it still looks nice. 
so you see I don't have enough paste so if you don't have enough paste you're gonna be scraping a lot and that can affect the way it looks on the actual background so just just saying just to be careful hold on okay hold on i'm just oh hi monica so i'm just going to do the to the bottom just do the stem all the way to the bottom and i think i did it too high up so the stem doesn't reach so i'm gonna have to kind of create a fake stem actually no i don't have to create a fake stem i will just add some border around it like i did in the other one and then it should be okay okay and there is my other poppy so i'm going to put this aside for a second i just want to show you how much actually i actually how much i have on this actual um stencil that i can actually save so yes i did use a lot on the on the on the on my pad on my silicone brush but it had a purpose because i can actually still save the paste but at the same time i get a perfect image because of that this only works this technique only works with something that is really thick if you're going to do this with something and with which is a little a little bit more liquidy um like even like even modeling paste sometimes it doesn't work on because you need that thickness uh to kind of take over the stencil or to kind of like go over the stencil well if it's too liquidy it will just run underneath so you don't want a lot when it's something more liquidy you actually want less on your palette than when it, you when it's something somewhere when it's thick so the opposite so that's a good rule to know when it's something thick when you have a thick paste then you you can use a lot of the paste on the stencil when you have a thin paste or thin gesso or anything that is not as thick as this one then you should use smaller amounts so you see how much i actually scraped out of this okay and it's basically and i did for the first time i can't believe i actually remember to fill up a bucket with water and it's gonna sit right sitting right behind me here and i'm really excited that i remember that because now i can um I can actually, uh, you know, not ruin my stencil. And but if I, if you do ruin your stencil and you forget to put it in water or wash it right away, which I can't wash right now, you can always look back at my YouTube tip or my YouTube cleaning how you clean your stencils the video tutorial and how I experimented with a bunch of um, the different um, how do you call this with the different materials products to be able to clean stencils and I and you just go and look Mur murphy oil wor worked perfectly and it's a really really cool Mur murphy oil soap actually i meant to say and it worked really really well so that was really cool um sorry one more thing before because i want to dry it all at once so now i'm actually gonna i'm gonna take a, a palette knife you could use this the, for this next technique you could use that but i want a palette knife because i want to create kind of this really um uh, how to explain really texturized um texture i don't know design and with this this is a so much softer brush so it will not come out as as i don't know cool i don't know the exact word and you'll see what i mean so i want it to be really uh distressed and to the spatula really creates this really um gritty distressed look to it so that's why I'm doing it with a spatula. I think I've added way too much here. I'm going to kind of take it off. I want it just a kind of a thin border. Sometimes you don't know what you get. Okay, so you want to create that border, but I don't want it perfect. And this was, this was I think, a bit too perfect for me. Okay, let's scrape off here. There, I think that's better. So... This is what I meant. I didn't have to finish the stem because I was just adding this to the border. So that was fine. And I'm using the same, you see like how I scraped that from the stencil? That's the same thing you can use to, to do this part of the project. And you don't have to do this part. You could just leave the, the flowers the way they are. 
and originally I had done that I actually didn't put this border around it but what happened is that I felt it was like too empty I don't like pages that are too empty I'm not a less is more kind of person I'm more of a more is more kind of person if that makes sense so I need to like really make it look like like it's framed or border and the, this helped kind of border everything in to make it look like it's part of the part of one item while the flowers didn't look like they were just in midair uh, as you can see I am adding this and you can see that I, a lot of this like the images get covered because of it so that's why I said I never know what I'm gonna get so that's why it's okay to stamp everywhere and even restamp after again um, thank you so much for linking that uh, Rika I, I should be able to link it also linking my the cleaning video as well because that helps for people to have to clean stencils I had a hard time cleaning stencils I actually had such dirty stencils at one point and I couldn't use some of them and after this Murphy also um, I able to use my stencils again which is really rare okay so hold on I'm just getting the edges here um, okay so there we go so that's basically the order the, the border and you'll see how I use I'm going to use um, the markers I'm going to use the Jane Davenport mermaid markers today and you'll see how cool it is to kind of play around with them okay so hold on a little bit more okay good so there is a good framed border I like how it looks right now I'm going to clean my palette knife really important to do that especially with this greedy texture that Morphe oil also helped these palette knives were so dirty and now they're so clean I am I was really excited about that okay so I'm going to close this I'm going to dry the nice thing about this uh, texture paste is that it dries really quickly so you see here I still have the underneath like all these images underneath and I still have the texture paste on top so I have it all but it will still get covered that's why I never know what's going to happen yeah so I'm going to be using Rika just uh, she put the mermaid marker so I can talk a little bit about them while I am drying I'm going to bring them over here so this Jane Davenport is like a very good and it's, well it's an amazing artist but she does like a watercolor paintings with markers she used to basically put ink in her in like empty markers uh, not markers empty like we know those water brushes Prima has some Tim Holtz I'm sure everybody has. and now she has her own set of markers that she's calling them markers but they're really like almost like water brushes that have ink inside of them and they're very intense very highly pigmented inks and you can create really cool effects with them now I'm debating whether or not I should go with different colors today to show you or should I just go with the red because I really love how the red ones came out but um, I'm debating no I don't know if I should I should just want to show exactly how I did this one it's really important that I follow through with what I did so because sometimes people will not know how to create it otherwise okay let me check so these are the markers let me just I can hold I want to show you how they look inside and I will show you in a few seconds okay let's see have dry no not dry yet but let me just let let me show you in the meantime so I'll show you how they work I'll Maybe I'll take out the yellow one. Oh, I think I might have used the yellow one already. Okay, let me just take out one that I haven't used. So I'm going to take out the reds, which is the ones that I used. The red and the brown. Okay. okay. Let, me, let me go with one like, I don't know, this blue here. Okay. So the way that you, it works, 
because I was trying to figure out how to make this work and it wasn't working. I don't know why I was trying to press. It doesn't working. Of course, I should have gone and read the instructions because you can have to push on this for the ink to come out. So actually what you do is you have to actually take this off and you have to take this really nice, cute little ring off this yellow ring. So what it does is that when you put this back on and you screw it back on, it creates pressure on the on inside and basically pokes a little tiny hole inside as long as you have the ring the safety is on but when you take that off then um then it already uh it already works so basically it creates a little hole in it so it's intact until you do that and then you just press press basically on this and the ink flows down so i'm going to show you this but i'm going to show you with the colors that i actually use so let me just finish drying i'm going to make sure I'm fully dry and um, yeah so that's what I want to do hold on Okay, so this should be partially dry, I guess. Um, okay, these I haven't used. So I did use this. I used the orange and the red. I started with the red and then I added orange. But I went back and forth. So basically, I just went with it. So you can use these as regular watercolor markers, um, which is, they're really like intense and really nice to use. So what I did is I pressed on it. Oops. And like release the color so now it's releasing okay and then what i did just to show you is that i use my my basically my spray bottle to kind of spread the ink around the nice thing is that i already have the border from this black texture so it wasn't a problem i could just go inside the border and I didn't even care if it went outside the border a little bit I just if I want I wanted it to be if, if it did go outside the border that it would it would be like lighter so I would every once in a while I would grab my like like a wipe and just basically dab it to make sure that it becomes lighter on the outside because I want the darkness to stay inside inside the the flower I want to do the same thing here and you could add the light one first it doesn't really matter you'll see what I mean oops so you could oops you could dab a little bit off to kind of make it lighter in the edges and darker in the center or you could use two colors and the nice thing about them is they're just really intense. They're right, they're really kind of dark and and give a really nice um, color to it. So if you see here, it's a little bit leaking. So I just kind of go on and do it. It's just because I have the, the the thing is on an angle. My um, how do you call this? My journal is on an angle, so I could put something. I could put something underneath like that, and that would hold it from going out it might be too high but still it's really nice now i'm going to use the other one and oh no maybe i will dry a little bit first hold on it doesn't have to be fully dry and you don't actually have to dry it but i just want it because it will react again with the with the other color but I just wanted them not to fully, fully be so wet. So I really like the combination of these two colors. It makes it really pretty. There we go.
and you can just go back and forth between the markers I mean this would have been really nice if it was also uh, purple or any other color but I just thought to just do the same one that I just did okay let's see it just helps the water just helps kind of blend the colors together yeah so it, the intensity becomes when you go the second time around it becomes the color becomes more intense that's becoming too high here now I also went around and went in between these as well so kind of created that extra border but I did lighten it up and kind of sprayed it going in so it would create kind of like a watery effect as it's going into the into the, the layout um, so if that makes sense I wanted to frame it I am very monochromatic kind of I have a monochromatic brain I think because I always see use up at least two to three things two to three colors no more than that on a layout or on a page or on anything I can't like kind of use more of that colors it doesn't go my brain doesn't see it my brain likes very symmetrical logical things I don't know if you heard the thunder over there but <laughs> it's thundering outside again Okay. Okay. So, and I want to make it lighter as it goes in. So that's why I'm kind of dabbing it a little bit. Because I want to make sure that it blends in with the rest of it. I'm trying to get in between here and also like I want to add the other color as well okay so now I'm gonna I was into a phase of that I was using only these two like these colors which is like the oranges and the reds, and then I go into a phase that I need like blues and greens and purple so it's it's strange how like I guess I don't know if it's my mood that changes that makes this um, like change like the colors that I like to use in my art I'm not sure like now I'm in a red face I can't even like use as much blue I mean I want to but right now I can't it says sometimes you need like certain colors in your life so maybe this is the color that I actually kind of need at the moment I've read that somewhere not sure if that's true or not but okay there we go oh it looks really yellowish huh it's not as yellow as you see it in the in the screen I don't know why it looks so yellowish okay there we go okay so let me dry it up a little bit oh I think this needs a little bit more of the of the orange color so I mean it's really easy to just paint with these I have to say that I really like the intensity of the color I think that's what kind of drew me to that yes yes Monica that's exactly where you can buy them you can buy them at Michaels you can also buy them on Amazon they're exclusive to Michaels and they're sold in Amazon as well other than that unfortunately you can't get them in the local stores at all I don't know why 
I have linked the um, Monica's as saying that she saw them at Michael's. So yeah, you could buy them from Michael's or you can buy them from um, from Amazon. I put the link to Amazon below because I don't have the link to Michael's. But um, Michael's is, I mean, Michael's, you can just go into the store and stuff like that. But Amazon definitely has them. So, and there not a lot of her products are available to them because they're exclusive to Michael's. So a lot of her products are not available for, for like small stores to other smaller stores, which is hard because not everybody has a Michael's nearby, right? So, or like wants to buy online and can't always do that. Well, it looks really, really yellowish. I don't know why. It's more like an orangey when you look here. As you can see, I keep on adding things. I need to kind of go back and forth and add things, but I think I'm done now. So I think it's good. I'm going to now just dry. So yeah, so I'm just drying the liquid part, the, the um, uh, how do you call this, the, the inked part. I want to make sure that it's dry enough so I can go over with my white marker above it. But also, I want to um, add a little bit. I don't even think I need to add any more, any more stamping to this. It actually came out... It came out like more the stamped images are seen much more here than in my original one. I'm not sure why. I must have added more white in the other one. That's what I think. I also think that I put more ink kind of going in. So I'm going to do that a little bit more. Oh, that's not the right color. So I want to see if there's a lot of white space. And I think, I think um, I want to kind of go in a little bit with the, with the colors. And I'll use some water to kind of um, mix that in. Hold on. Um, yeah, so Monica is saying that she sometimes can find the Finabare products. So Amazon, yeah, Amazon tends to have almost everything. Uh, so... I find, you know, where I buy a lot of, like I, like I find that they have a lot of things is uh, Joggles or Blitzy. They do have like a lot of the materials. Um, they don't, I guess, don't sell out as quickly. Some do. Joggles, I find, that's a good one. But I find you can't beat Amazon with their, with their, um, how do you call this, with their free shipping thing, especially in the U.S., it's so good with the, even the Prime. I mean, we have Prime in Canada, but it's not the products are not as good in Canada, so there's no point on buying so much here. Okay, I'm sorry. I keep on adding things. I want to kind of blend more color in. Uh, let me see here. I want to see if I can... Okay, I kind of changed the color intensity a little bit on the, on my settings. Okay, so I'm almost done. The flowers are basically joggles. I actually linked some of the things from there. Right, right above, Monica, you'll see uh, joggles. It's spelled like J-O-G-G-L-E-S. She's asking what it is. Um... If you see the link above the Rika put, um, you'll see that like it, it's from Joggles. It right beside it says. So that's a good, you know, spell it out for you. And it has a lot of products. So that's also a place where I always link things to. Because I find that like it, it helps when people know where to go and buy, right? Okay. Okay, so 
Okay, so this is um, this is a Posca white Posca pen, and what I went is what I did with it. Sorry, is that I just added some highlights on the flowers and on the around, and I kind of did a border. So I just oh, everything is really hot. Hold on, I have to kind of cool it down. The page is hot from just um, how do you call this from just like drying it. So I'm going to create a little bit of a. I'm gonna put some of the white ink here so I can go back and forth. It's just sometimes easier. Hold on. So any of these acrylic markers are great. I found the Posca pens were are my favorite in terms of how they work. This is a three millimeter Posca pen. They have thicker ones, but I found this is the easiest one to work with. Um, hold on, I have to kind of. So what it does is that it creates the highlights. Um, around my flower and somehow it's not working I don't know why I don't know if it's it's working but I might have to go twice over it so just bear with me sometimes you have to do it twice I think that everything is kind of a bit wet the nice thing about the white Although it would be nice if it would, st it would stay white, but because this is uh, the, the, these markers are water soluble, I mean, this is acrylic paint, but I mean, because of the Jane Davenport markers are actually water soluble, you get that, you know, the, the white kind of mixes with the ink. So you get like it a little bit more mixed up than you want it to be. Another thing I did is I went in the middle and created these like really cute white. Um, dots that became kind of yellowish I mean it's just adding a little bit of highlights to to the to the flowers and then I go around the edges of the really distressed edge of my project and I just highlight that area as well I'm not going into that flower yet because it looks a little bit wet so I'm just going to do the edges first and I'm not being really careful I want it to look kind of distressed so I'm trying to go around the distressed edge and that helps to just to create that really nice border so that is just what I did I find it helps kind of um, kind of bring it all in together so that's why I did the border you don't have to do this part and the reason why I have to do it the way I'm doing it with dipping it in is because uh, it's a little bit it's still a little bit wet it works better when things are dry so I need some of that ink to kind of flow better and you can go back you see like you can go back the second time around the lines become darker and more intense not darker but you know wider it's more like this. Um, so it works well that way okay and I'm going to go back to this one now I really need to dry this one. This one is super wet. I don't know why, but I have to dry it more. Yes, you have to be, so Rika is saying that you have to be very careful and not to, not to ruin these markers, to really wait until things are dry. So yeah it's the impatience will get us all that's a problem and this is why i buy a few of these because i know i'm going to eventually ruin them given that see it's still wet i can't get it to like dry up i'm not sure why So then I really like that the numbers are kind of um, inside uh, inside the flower 
it looks makes it look really distressed as you can see you see the numbers are kind of inside the flower i think it makes it look really cool so this is what i meant i don't know where the stamps are going to land sometimes they land where i want them and sometimes they don't so you have to play around with it and you know you can always add more so yeah that's basically the rule um so yeah let me just see here and now hold on i want to put my i was going to put my um how do you call it? i didn't put our apron on although you can't see because i figured oh nobody can see me but i forgot that i'm going to be doing this which is making like this is really good to make um these dots like you know like kind of like so you have to kind of cover yourself because otherwise you're going to get them everywhere. And this one is not working as well as usual. I think I used it last time. Ooh. So basically just... Sometimes I literally just bang it and it works. So I'm, I'm working harder than what it's supposed to be. But I just want some of the, the ink to kind of flow and create these really cute dots everywhere. Which is not happening. Like here, I'll show you. It worked last time. I don't know why you see how like all the dots, oops, all the dots are kind of there, and you just, you just basically um, do that. But it's not working, and that's okay. I'll just continue pretending that it's working. And but that is the key to to just add a few of those dots everywhere. Um. I want to go over again with the white marker okay hold on okay so now hold on okay so now I just want to uh, stamp a little bit of just want to stamp this just because I did add this circle to the other one as well and it just kind of makes it all kind of go together and then I'll do the title and I'm done so for this one I think I'm going to put the circle kind of here and it's going to be just half a circle over there not the full one and I think the other one will go kind of here yeah there we go and then the third one has to go I think at the bottom here there we go okay so that's pretty good um maybe I'll just do a little bit more of that hold on because now it's not balanced in my eyes okay okay so this is basically the layout and then what I did is I just took my label maker and just created basically a a title the other one says just create so I guess I'll do the same um, so all you have to do is just kind of move it to the letter that you want and you press and it just creates that it's really easy I love this because you can actually do anything you want with it just just okay there's just and I'm gonna pull it a little bit so then I can doesn't it's not so close to the other one no you know what maybe I'll do just just be I thought that's the thing that came to my mind now just be maybe just be you yeah, I think just be you is better. So, well, this is, see, you can make, there's a nice thing about it. You can make anything you want with it. You go back and forth between the letters. I'm sure there's more fancier ones. Um, there we go. But I like this one. Makes it, it's perfectly fine for my, what I, for my needs. I don't need it more than this. Just going to cut up. 
okay and there you have it i have my words and i'm just going to cut them up so um hold on maybe you cut this one too close to this but that's okay i just want to straighten it up okay there we go so hold on i'm just cutting be you I'm just cutting them up so there we go and I'm just going to use a little bit of the soft gel to glue them on and then we're done I'm not sure I'm reading something about Halloween but I don't know what you guys are talking about so um, maybe I'll take a paintbrush because I always use my fingers for everything okay and they're perfect like they're so easy they're plasticky and they're perfect for what i need just oops this one's upside down So they're really good. This label maker is really good. So when you want to make your own title, so you don't have the right thing to what you want to say or how you feel. Oh, come on, stick on. Not wanting to stick. Not sure why. There we go. Well, maybe not. It's not wanting to stick. So I'll just have to put something heavy on top of it. So it will stay. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for coming. Those of you who came today. Oh, wow. The numbers really changed as I didn't even look. I like it. So I'm really grateful for all of you that came. Uh, next week, Rika is going to be on. So come in and watch how she does this, her amazing project. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. It always is. And um, so here are the two different ones they're not exactly fully the same there is the one and let me see if i can put them like side on no i can't put them side by side they're not working and uh well kind of there so here they are they're very similar just like they are backwards in terms of where i put the the flowers or in the saying but all the same i really um I really like 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 this technique and I love the markers and I hope you enjoyed yourselves today. Thank you so much for coming and see you all next week. Bye.